it's Martin Fitzgerald. He's back in harmony. It's for Martin himself. He's been taken care of. I arranged for him to get a new ID and be relocated. He'll be a threat to us no longer. He'd better not be, or we'll all live to regret it. Father would kill me if Martin showed up in the harmony. You see, I can't let him get away. Martin, you stop! I demand you stop this instant! How could this have happened? Charity could have died. But she didn't, Grace, and neither did Miguel. That's what's important. You know, the tree lighting ceremony has always been such a symbol of Christmas and harmony. Oh. What frightening events. Grace, is your niece all right? Yes, thank God. Oh, good. I am so glad, because I was so looking forward to having you all come over to my house for the party tonight. I'm sorry, Ivy. You know, with everything that's gone on, I don't think we're in the spirit anymore. But you just have to come. You and Sam, you have to. Look, this isn't a game, mister. Two kids almost died during the Christmas tree lighting. The wires to the switch were frayed. I, I didn't do anything. I, I, I wasn't, I told you, I wasn't at the lighting. It, it, it was some other Santa. Who? Uh, I'm not sure. Well, you just told me you knew. I, uh, well, it's, it's... It's foggy. Okay, okay. Then you tell me where you were when the accident happened. I, I don't know. I, I I remember something about a hot toddy. You know, Sam, we're not getting anywhere with this guy. He's too loaded. No, no. I only had one or two. And, oh, yes. There was an elf. A really weird little elf. Tabitha. Tabitha, wake up. Tabitha. She must have fainted. Why? She took one look at us and just keeled over. Tabitha. Jerry and Miguel were dust, too. Uh, maybe the ghost. Oh, 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 you're dead. You're dead. You're... I think she's coming around. Oh, you, you two are dead. What does she mean, Miguel? I'm not sure. Oh, oh, you, you two are dead. You were... You were electrocuted at the, 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 the lighting ceremony. I didn't even think she was there. She wasn't. How'd you know that happened? I would hold the hand of the one who could lead me places And kiss the lips of the one who could sing so sweet It's Christmas Eve, and my mom is making us work in her shop. I think it's kind of fun watching all the last-minute shoppers. You know what, Simone? If you think this is fun, you need a life. Like, you should talk when your whole life is trying to steal Miguel away from charity. You're not going to put it down when I finally get him. I'm not holding my breath, Kay. Don't laugh. When I saw Miguel and Charity almost die at that tree lighting ceremony, it really got to me. It made me realize that any day could be our last, and that... I've got to get more focused. Can I help you with anything, Kay? Yeah. Actually, you can, Reese. You can um, be in charge of gift wrapping. It's over there. I 
wonder what Miguel and Charity are doing right now. I bet it's something really romantic to celebrate how close they came to losing their lives. Excuse me, I have a customer. You know what? I don't care what Miguel and Charity are doing tonight. Because I'm going to spend the next millennium with him. No, no, of course, you're right. I wasn't at the tree lighting ceremony. I was, uh, uh, I, I heard it on the radio. Ooh, Princess deserves a black belt for lying. And the announcer made it sound as if you and Charity had been killed. Oh, I can't tell you the horror I felt and the tears I wept at the cruel injustice of two young people being cut down in their prime. I can't believe it was already on the radio. Well, it was wrong. I mean, as you can see, Miguel and I are just fine. I, it was a close call. Charity suddenly got cold, so we switched places. I mean, if we didn't move at that second, we would have been electrocuted. All the lousy timing. Um, you make it sound like it's a bad thing that we're okay. Oh, oh, no, no, dear. On the contrary. No, no, what I meant was that, that it was awful timing for such a near tragedy to occur on Christmas Eve. And I'm absolutely livid with that radio station for making me believe that two of the dearest young people in Harmony were almost burned to a crisp. Uh, in fact, I think I'm going to call them right now and no, give them a piece of my mind. Don't, Tabitha. All right, don't work yourself up. You're still weak. Right, and in fact, maybe we should call Dr. Russell, have her come look at you. No, 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 I'm fine. <laughs> Thrilled, in fact. But uh, you haven't told me yet why, why you dropped by. I'm sure you have better things to do with your evening. <laughs> Actually, it was Charity's idea. She brought you a Christmas wreath. A wreath? Oh, how festive. Yeah, Miguel hung it on the door before we knocked. <laughs> Very thoughtful. <laughs> Oh, Tabitha, no. Whoa, whoa, hold on there, big Saint Nicky. You know, those drinks must be packing some wallop. Yeah, too big a wallop for him to have frayed any wires to the switch. Oh. He can barely stand up, let alone mastermind something like that. Oh. Quinlan, get over here. Take Santa Claus downtown. Uh, uh, no, no, I, I, I don't want to go to jail. I, I, I just had a little nip. Look, we're not arresting you. Seems that what happened tonight was an accident. We just want you to sleep it off. Come on, Santa. You know what, Sam? It's a shame that you're good at your job. Meaning? You know, you just blew our excuse to miss Ivy Crane's Christmas Eve party. You forgot all about that. I, mean, I don't want to put you on the spot, but when are you going to level with me about your past with Ivy Crane? Well, it's awfully nice of you to want us to come to your party, Ivy, but why is it so important? Well, I just think that we should all make an effort not to let these near tragic events spoil our Christmas Eve. Well, we don't want it to. Then say you'll come. You and Sam. Oh, uh, I'm not sure, Ivy. See, the last we saw of Sam and TC, they were out looking for the hired Santa Claus to see if he could shed some light on how Charity and Miguel were was killed. Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Excuse me, officer. Do you know where my husband is? Uh, I just came from Miss Bennett. He's some cop. He wrapped this case up in no time flat. Well, there. Sam's done his job. Now you have no excuse for not coming to my party tonight. Well, you and TC, too, of course, Eve. Well, I'll expect you all later. She was not taking no for an answer about you and Sam coming to her party. Oh, she wanted you and TC there, too. Half as much. We're just an afterthought on her agenda. I wonder what that is. I know what it is. It's all about Sam.
What was that? <laughs> Mistletoe. <sighs> you said you believed in the usual Christmas traditions. I do, but... <sighs> Hank, I like you. But I don't want to give you the wrong idea. I'm not looking for anything serious right now. Sure, I know, okay? I don't want to rush you. Just give me a chance to show you what a great catch I am. They look nice together, huh? Perhaps Hank is the man Sheridan's been waiting for. No way. The jig is up, Martin. I warned you never to show your face here. What the hell are you talking about, mister? I'm sorry. I, I, I thought you were someone else. <laughs> God, that wasn't Martin. Father would be furious. What was that all about Julian? <clears throat> I heard you call that man Martin. Don't tell me Martin Fitzgerald is here in harmony after all. Louise, you seem upset about the idea of Hank being the right man for Sheridan. Not at all. He's just not right for her. They come from two different worlds, you know? Well, perhaps you don't like to see Hank getting involved with someone you dislike so much. Actually, I was wrong about her. But Sheridan's okay. You know, Sammy, it's pretty obvious to me Ivy Crane wants you at her Christmas party. Not only me, she wants Grace there and you and Eve. You know damn well it's you. You know, we're just, we're just a window dressing. Listen, you don't think Grace picked up one, do you? Why would Sam be the reason that Ivy wants us to all come to her party? Isn't it obvious? You know, the Cranes are always cultivating the important people in town, and Sam is chief of police. I just want to make sure he's a friend of the family. Maybe. Well, it's the same thing with you and TC. I mean, TC's head coach, and you are the most respected doctor in town. I wouldn't even consider going to this party if the Cranes weren't financing the new pediatric wing. Well, what is it you have against the Cranes, Eve? I mean, you almost dislike them as much as Sam and Louise do. No, not at all. Just don't have anything in common with them. I find it a little hard to relate to people with this money-is-no-object, jet-setting lifestyle. Oh, well, maybe that's why I like visiting them. You know, see how different people live? No, I'm gonna go make sure Sam's not backing out on me. You gonna come along? I'll catch up with you later. You are so innocent, Grace. You have no idea what some people are capable of. What's wrong, dear? I just realized you don't have any Christmas decorations up. Why not? What do you think our friends in the basement would do if they caught us celebrating Christmas of all holidays? <sighs> the truth is, I just plain forgot. Forgot Christmas. <laughs> uh, I know it's... Hard for you to imagine at your age, but, well, I'm getting on a bit now, and with, with one thing and another, Christmas just slipped my mind. <laughs> but it, it, it's a good thing, really, because I'm finding it harder and harder to get the decorations up each year. Oh, but to not have any, that's so sad. Oh, well, sweet of you to care, dear, but I'll make do. <laughs> After all, it's really just another day in the year, isn't it? Well, I just realized that Miguel and I have to go. Oh, well, lovely. Glad you could drop by. <laughs> now, you are sure that you don't want me to have Dr. Russell come look in on you? Oh, positive. <laughs> now, you two run along and have a lovely holiday. Thanks, we will. Enjoy the wreath. <sighs> Why'd you want to leave so quickly? Well, there's something I want to do for Tabitha. And I need your help. 
Look, I've been saving up to buy myself a special Christmas present. It's going to take more than 50 bucks to get Miguel to leave charity. Very funny. No, do you remember those black strappy heels we saw at Lowell's? They were so hot. Mariah Carey wore a pair just like them at her last concert. Well, between this blouse and those shoes, Miguel is sure to notice how sexy I am. And then it's so long to sweet virginal charity. Come on, Lowell's is open late tonight. Let's go. You got a second, Kay? Ugh, for crying out loud. Be nice, he's still Miguel's best friend, okay? What is it, Reese? I just had the most brilliant idea, but I wanted to get your opinion first. What if I used glitter on all the packages? Knock yourself out. <laughs> okay, could you just put your finger on this while I get the lid off? Sure, but I'm kind of in a rush, so... All right, it'll only take a second. <laughs> Hey, Kay, I think you're supposed to decorate the ornaments, not yourself. <laughs> Jimmy knows that his princess is frustrated, so Jimmy figured out a way he could help. Oh, how could you possibly help me destroy Charity and Miguel? Well, Jimmy read that sometimes people use charts to help them solve their problems. So Jimmy made charts so Tabitha can see what she's doing wrong. See. Charity five. Tabitha zero. Zip. Zilch. Nada. Nothing. Zippo. The bear. Uh, zero. Whoa. You want to know what I think of your chart, Timmy? There. Ah. Put it in Fluffy's litter box. No. On second thoughts, don't. Nothing I hate more than recycling. I'm just trying to help. Well, don't. You're lousy at it. Oh, I've got to get out of here. I've got to think. Oh. Oh, I can't go out the front door because that damn wreath is on it. And, and, and we can't take it down because then Charity and Miguel will get suspicious. Just as I thought. Our friends in the basement are not amused. Uh, uh, just, uh, just please calm down. Uh, uh, until we lose the wreath, I'll use the back door. And I'm sorry about mucking up the electrocution. I'll, I'll try harder next time. I'm afraid I'll never get my powers back. She may think if you calm them down, tell them. Look, the red glow's going away. For now, anyway. Let's just hope we don't take them off again. Jimmy knows what the, what's in the basement doesn't like Christmas, but what harm could one little tree be? I am so sorry, Kate. Here, let me help you get it off. Thanks. <laughs> oh, uh, you never said what you wanted my help with. Oh, well, actually, it would be better if we all did it. Jessica, how long did your mom say you have to keep the store open? Um, she said it was up to us. Perfect. We just came from Tabitha's. You would not believe how stark and drab it is in there. <sighs> so what else is new? It's Christmas Eve, Kay. Well, when I asked her why she didn't have any decorations up, she gave me all these excuses. Which gave me an idea. What if we decorate our house for her? That's a nice thought, but isn't it kind of late for that? Not really. I mean, look at all these decorations that your mom has on sale. They would be perfect. The only problem is, I don't have any money on me. Don't be ridiculous. It's my mom's store. It's okay. <clears throat> GK, I don't think I'd feel right about that. I, I mean, mom left us in charge of the store, and she's not in the business of giving things away for free. <laughs> I know you have money on you, Kay. We can use that. 
What have you been nipping at the communal eggnog, darling? Of course, Martin Fitzgerald is in harmony. He knows better than to come here. By now, he should be in Alaska. Should be. Mm -hmm. You know, I think your father would take your name off the company letterhead if he thought that Martin was still around. I think I know my father's feelings on a given subject better than you, darling. Did Sheridan and Louise see Martin when they were in New Mexico as well? So if he were here in Harmony, they'd be able to recognize him straight away. Oh, don't worry your vicious little mind, darling. I'm not worried about Martin Fitzgerald. Everything's under control. <laughs> you hope. I already know that you're a nice guy, Hank. Yeah, but what? But I meant what I said. I'm really not ready to get involved with anyone right now. You sound like Luis. That's what he says? Yeah, when the subject comes up. Look, I know that you don't really have any use for him, but he's really a good guy. I know that now. You do? I mean, earlier you said that you weren't falling for Luis. Were you being straight with me? That's what I'm talking about. Every time Ivy Crane's name come up, you get all tense. And no, I, I don't think that Grace ever picked up on anything. But listen, man, you and I, we go way, way back. Now, you know, anything you say to me stays between us. I know. It was the summer you went away to tennis camp. Sam, that must have been more than 20 years ago, man. The first time I laid eyes on Ivy Crane was at Old Dune Beach. I was a lifeguard for the summer. She was swimming by herself. What you do, save her life? No way. She was a hell of a swimmer. I just fell head over heels in love with her. I guess she felt the same way. I mean, we started going out. But we had to do it secretly. She was a governor's daughter, and I was just, well, I was just Sam Bennett. TC, she was so beautiful. You know, Sam, she's still not bad to look at. Yeah, well, it was an incredible time while it lasted. It just didn't last. So what happened, buddy? She married Julian Crane, and that was that. You know, Sam, it's a very small town, and people talk. And from what I hear, they don't have the greatest marriage. I wouldn't know. Sammy, is it possible she never got over you? Is that the reason why we're going to all these Crane Mansion parties because of you? Because she hasn't gotten over you yet? It doesn't matter. I don't want to have anything to do with Ivy Crane ever again. What do you mean, Sam? <laughs> Grace. Sam. You don't want to have anything to do with Ivy Crane again? I mean, what are you talking about? Well, you know, Grace, Sam was just saying we've all been to a party at the Cranes the last few months, and he doesn't want to spend his Christmas Eve without another one. <laughs> I understand, but we already said yes. It's a little late to back out now, don't you think? Hey, you are. Hey, Eve. Hey. I was afraid I wouldn't be able to find you. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we all better get home and change if we're going to make it to the Cranes on time. You really want to go to that party, don't you? It'll be fun. You'll see. We don't have to stay that long. I guess we'll make an appearance. The rest of Christmas Eve is going to be perfect. A big fancy party, and then midnight mass with the kids. Well, that's what I'm looking forward to. Oh, come on, Sam. Imagine if Alistair Crane's there. I mean, all of us hobnobbing with the most powerful family in town. Hmm. Could be wonderful. <laughs> Me fall for Louise? No way, Hank. All I meant was that I don't think he's the monster I did when I first moved back to Harmony. Well, I told you. <laughs> Look, instead of standing out here freezing our fingers off, what do you say we go get some hot chocolate? You're wrong. Let's go. What changed your mind about Sheridan? The last time we spoke, you were disgusted with her. Oh, I made a mistake. Yeah. Turns out that she didn't throw that compact I gave her in the trash. I see. So, if you can change your mind about Sheridan, why can't you change your mind about your father? Never. A man's a low-life thief. I don't want to hear that kind of talk, especially on Christmas all right, Eve. All right, I'm sorry. All right? The last thing I want to do is hurt you. Then don't damn your father on Christmas Eve. Pray for him.
I'd like to, Mama. He doesn't deserve it. I wonder where cowards spend the holidays. I've got to get out of this weather. Sorry, I've only got a couple bucks. I have some change. I'm all tapped out. <clears throat> it's up to you, Kay. Does our eccentric but well-meaning and very lonely old neighbor get to experience the true joy of Christmas? Or not? We'll understand if you need the money for something else. Are you kidding? I mean, Kay knows that there's nothing more important than sharing what she's got with someone more needy. Great. With this much money, we can really do a job on Tabitha's house. Hey, Tabitha's heading down the street right now. Perfect. We'll transform her place while she's out. Oh, she's gonna be so surprised when she gets home. Okay, you guys pick out some stuff and... I'll Definitely that. Back. Yes. <laughs> it's not fair, Simone. Charity scores all the points with Miguel and I pay for it. We reap what we sow, Kay. Disgraceful. Simply disgraceful. I haven't botched a job this badly since I slipped up and let them create the Peace Corps in the 60s. <sighs> I deserve the contempt of the shadows in my basement. <sighs> I know how I can cheer myself up. I shall do something that shows what I'm really made of. Just a little touch of nastiness to spoil some innocent's day. Peace on earth, goodwill to men. Please share a little of what you have with those less fortunate. Perfect. Just perfect. God bless you. What, what are you doing? Leave the donations alone. Help! Someone help! Now Timmy can watch how the Grinch stole Christmas all the way through the end and even cry when the Grinch realizes the true meaning of Christmas. Uh-oh. I couldn't be Tabitha. She said she wouldn't be coming through the front door. I feel kind of funny about just walking into Tabitha's house. Don't. It's for a good cause. I mean, think about how Tabitha's going to feel when she sees what we've done. It's still kind of weird. I can't believe we're doing this. You can't. I think it's a great idea to decorate half of this house for Christmas while she's out. Oh, some things in the basement are not going to like this. This looks safe enough. Mm. Give us some hot chocolate. Make yourself comfortable. Okay. Yeah, I am. I, you know, I just came in to get some hot coffee before going back out. It is pretty cold out there. Yeah. Well, I don't mind the cold. You know, it's just when the wind comes off the ocean, I just, you know, just cuts right through you. <laughs> well, let me get you that cup of coffee. Yeah. You know what? That's not Hey, necessary. will you get Luis a cup of coffee? Thank you. Don't worry about it. I'll take it to go. Don't be silly. I mean, stay in here and keep warm with us. It's the least I can do. 
after you kept me warm in Santa Fe. Luis. What's up, man? Hey, do you two got something going on here that I ought to know about? Pour you a drink, Sweetums? No, thank you. I think I'll wait until our guests arrive. I'd appreciate it if you didn't drink too much tonight. I'll drink as much as I want. If ever an evening call for fortification, it's this one. Please, come in. Hello. Hi. Welcome. Oh, thank Please. Hi. Julia? Come on in. <laughs> well, I'm just so glad you could all make it here. Oh, well, thank you for having us, Ivy. <laughs> you know, this room is magnificent. Ah, oh, yes. Well, the library is generally Julian's haven, but I thought it would just be cozier to start in here tonight. Mm. Please, feel free to look around. Go <laughs> warm yourself by the fire. Ah, Julian won all of those when he was much younger playing tennis. Oh, you played some tennis too, didn't you, TC? Yes. Ivy... I can't believe you have a copy of that Bible. I, mean, I thought there were only four or five in existence. Oh, yes, that's true. Oh, my. Uh, Sam, Eve, you have to see this. <laughs> you are the host of the party. You could at least pretend to be having a decent time. I'm not that good of an actor, dear. Good evening, Crane Residence. Oh, yes, Mr. Alistair. We lost her. If we split up, we'll have a better chance. What kind of person steals from the needy at Christmas? <laughs> what kind of person? My kind of person. <sighs> oh, I knew I shouldn't have worn all these bracelets. <sighs> and still... Who needs all this aggravation on a cold, blustery night? I'm going home where it's nice and warm and peaceful. And maybe that little scamp has even made us a batch of martinis. <laughs> You kidding? Santa's workshop at the North Pole isn't this Christmassy. I'm not gonna like this. Is it straight, sweetheart? It's perfect. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Mom. Merry Christmas to you. You okay, Charity? Yeah. I was just remembering Christmas with my mom. We used to decorate the tree together. I'm sorry she's not here. But it's good that you're starting to remember more. Yeah. It makes me feel closer to her, even though she's gone. Okay, everybody. How does it look? What's that light? I don't know. Did someone turn on the lights in there? Not me, turn on the light. Mm. Well, whatever it is, it's kind of creepy. Hey, here's where it's coming from. I think it's Tabitha's basement. What could it be? Maybe, like, a warning light or something, like for oil heater? I should check it out. Can you do that if you with you? Whoops, must be in the wrong house. Tell the... It's the right house, but... Oh, what the hell's going on here, Timmy? I warned you about getting in the Christmas spirit. It wasn't Jimmy. 
It wasn't. It was them. Who them? If you set off our friends in the basement, they'll be hell to pay. <laughs> Boom. That's weird. It's locked. What's so funny? How did Luis keep you warm in Santa Fe anyway? Let's just say he was very considerate of me when I was sick. That's all. I told you he was a nice guy. Hey, you two have a good night. I got no, go, we so. really don't mind. Tell him it's okay to stay, Hank. Yeah, just hang out for a while and warm up before you get back out on the beat. There's a table right there. All right. Sugar. Hey, buddy, you mind passing me the sugar? Well, why don't we all move into the living room and let Julian have some privacy as he talks to his father? Actually, Mr. Alistair doesn't wish to speak with Mr. Julian. Well, fine. I'll take everyone inside and my wife can speak with my father. No, sir. He didn't ask to speak with Mrs. Crane either. For heaven's sake. Ethan and Sheridan are out. And with whom does my father want to speak? He has to speak with the Russells and the Bennetts. Won't open, and there is definitely something wrong down there. I mean, look at that light. We've got to do something. Stand back. Come on, Reese. Let's knock it down. Slow down. I can't get one word you're saying. And why do you keep pointing in the direction of the basement? Miguel and Kay and Charlie and everybody are here. Here. In our house. And they put up all the decorations. And they saw the red light. And they've gone to investigate. One more time, Reese. What do you mean, Joe? What are we going to do? We're taking a powder, Timmy. If those kids break open that door, all hell's gonna break loose. And I mean that quite literally. One, two, three. 